welcome to our Veterans Channel. Uh, I'm here today with Paul Knudsen, Director of Armed Services Relations at National Lewis University, uh, who's going to share with us today some of his thoughts, strategies, and knowledge on how to get our veterans more engaged in the educational system and set them up for further success as they look for employment. So, yeah. good morning, Paul. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, so is, first, just tell us a little bit about your background, about yourself, and what you do. Sure. So, um, so uh, prior service, Army, 20 years. Uh, in fact, I just last, uh, this past weekend, celebrated my 20th anniversary. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, so I'm still uh, serving in the reserves. Um, got uh, 13 years of active duty service, prior service enlisted, an officer now uh, after 15 years switched over. Um, I'm uh, currently, as you noted, at National Lewis University. I run the veterans program there. Um, we have about 250 plus veterans that are in uh, the university that we have the uh, privilege and honor of serving and helping them achieve their educational and career goals coming out. Um, in addition, I'm uh, actively engaged with Illinois Joining Forces here in the state of Illinois. I serve as the co-chairman for the Employment and Job Training Working Group, um, as well as one of the key leaders in the Education Working Group, naturally, with my function at the university. And also, um, I have the, the, the great honor of serving on the, uh, the State of Illinois Discharge Service Members Task Force, which is um, a policy recommending body to the governor's office and to the state legislature on, uh, on veterans' issues. Okay. Uh, so when we talked before this, you brought up some great talking points mm -hmm. that, that I would just want to kind of plug and get you to talk sure. about this morning. So the first is, is when we're delivering uh, your wraparound educational services mm -hmm. to veterans. Uh, how, how do you approach that holistically yeah. and, and how do you do it in such a manner as to have a direct effect on the outcome? Sure. So, um, you know, the process of uh, going through your education, I experienced that personally. I went back to school in 2007 um, <clears throat> here in the city at Northwestern and um, struggled with my transition. Um, in between, I had to depart, I was deployed. Um, I missed three years, I came back and, and just keep going back and forth. And one of the things that's unique about veterans, um, unlike their, their uh, partners in the non-traditional students, you know, adult students, which right. essentially were adult students, non-traditional students, but there's so many different dynamics that the veteran and military connected students, and we refer to military connected students, because um, it's not just veterans, it's not just active duty, reserve, or guard, but it's also family members. And so we look at the whole community of the military connected students and then say, well, what are some of the obstacles and what are the opportunities that are available to them? And then how can we connect them to an inclusive network that starts before coming to the school, right? It starts at the point when you're trying to help these individuals maximize their full potential. So if you're you know, a student who wants to come to a university like National Lewis University and it's a suitable place for you, we're going to ensure that you're successful there. However, we're not going to try to fit a square peg into a round hole. Yeah. And so it starts at the beginning and that includes bringing our enrollment uh, advisors, our outreach specialists to bring them into a, a regular discussion. And so at the university, one of the things we do is we've created working groups within the university so that it's not just my office. It's actually an entire system of, we call them pods, that come together on a weekly slash bi-weekly basis to address these needs as we're forming this integration process to bring and welcome new students into the, into the system. Then once they're in the system, another set of pods around program development and around student engagement are focused on ensuring that we're able to increase the level of engagement, which is key, based on trust-based relationships. And so it's really getting to know each one of our students on a personal level so that when you, know, you, you run into that, that not so often case of someone struggling, right? It doesn't happen often, but it's the ones that are struggling that we want to be able to reach. Right. They need to trust us. Nobody's gonna walk up to us and say, hey, you know, I'm having trouble sleeping at night. Mm -hmm. But if they have that established relationship and they know that we're looking out for their best interest, they're more open to being able to raise that issue. Now, now we can tap into a broader array of services, whether it's internally or externally with our partners, in order to deliver services, to remove whatever obstacles are there, mm -hmm. or to exploit the opportunities that they're trying to take advantage of. Okay, 
So that being said, it sounds like you have a very well-established system, a lot of checks, balances yeah. to make sure the veterans are making it through successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you collaborate externally mm -hmm. with, with your public entities, private entities, those partnerships yeah. that, that increase the effectiveness? So, so say you got a guy that's having trouble sleeping and, and he comes to one of his advisors there at National Lewis yeah. and he's struggling. Uh, what do you have in place that can assist him with that? No, that's a great question, and I'll use a different example than the sleep, just to kind of mix it up to talk about, you know, there certainly there's mental health issues, but there's mm -hmm. other issues. Um, universities are not typically designed to help their students overcome financial obstacles. In fact, most of the time when we think of financial support, what we think of is your GI Bill benefits or right. other scholarships or financial aid and those things. Um, but one thing that we found is that veterans who are transitioning sometimes struggle with financial literacy. And when you're in the military, every, everything is set for you. Right. Money comes in, money goes out. You know, you know how much you're getting. You have a, a network that's really, um, you know, your biggest uh, challenge is making sure you pay off your car note so you, know, you don't get in trouble with the first sergeant when, <laughs> when the cars start calling right. and stuff. But when you get out in the world, you're in a very different f economic system. Mm -hmm. um, and so oftentimes veterans struggle with that. And then what happens is, is they're not prepared to be able to handle emergencies that come up. And then instead of trying to come up with a, a good solution, their, their reaction is to, I'm going to drop out of school because I need to work more in order to pay my bills. Right. Sometimes that solution can be, uh, that problem can be resolved by an emergency grant. And what's wonderful about the veteran community is there's so many organizations that are out there, like um, Salute Inc. Is, is one of those organizations. The Ellen Lynch Foundation is another, that they provide these types of emergency grants to veterans in order to help them overcome these little bumps in the road. Students who don't know this, and veterans who don't know this, and they're not connected to that, that network of public-private partnership, you know, like Illinois Joining Forces, members of Illinois Joining Forces, that provide those types of services, when these veterans don't know that, they don't think that, oh, I can go to my university to get that type of help. But when you have those trust-based relationships that are established on enhanced engagement, um, when that problem arises, and we've had two uh, examples in working with a third right now, where we said, well, let's stop. Let's do some financial literacy training. Let's look at your budget. Let's, let's figure out where the real problem is and then let's apply for an emergency grant and these are grants and we've had two um, on average fifteen hundred dollar grants be given to our students which ultimately resulted in them staying in school because we know that once you take a term off your chances of coming back and completing drop significantly and so mm -hmm. we need to do everything that we can to connect them to these types of services that are out there like this more broad picture of financial services so that we can remove that obstacle in that case, which then ultimately leads to uh, improved retention. And I'll tell you this, the, the, the ability to connect with these external partners like, um, like the ones I mentioned, but also other organizations like um, the VITAL program at VA or the Road Home program over at Rush or um, you know, National ABLE and so many more like that. It gives us an extreme amount of, of options so that when, a, when an, an obstacle or an opportunity presents itself, we know where to go with that. What this has enabled us to do over the course of the last three years at National Lewis, um, just a very brief background, we had a grant from the McCormick Foundation of you know, $750,000 grant that enabled us to develop this program over the last three years. We completed that in December the numbers are out and over that three year period through this uh, process of holistic wraparound services partnering with public private partnerships like Illinois Joining Forces we've increased our term to term retention rate over the three year period by over 34 percent wow. so that's really the that's the impact right is right. now we have more and more student veterans military connected students continuing term to term and approaching graduation, which ultimately then leads to them achieving meaningful employment. And that's the goal. So it, sound, it sounds to me like you guys are doing a, a fantastic job of treating the source of the problem and not the symptom. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and absolutely. in so many cases, treating the symptom is what goes on without any real thought being put towards, you know, what, what is the root cause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's good to hear. So, Thanks. 
So we, we appreciate your insights. And in closing, as, uh, as you know, I'm a, I'm a program manager at Sears. I run yeah. veteran talent acquisition for them. And, and I see so many different sides of the veteran employment problem on a daily basis. But one of the things I consistently like to do with my business partners is sell them on the soft skills that almost every veteran yeah. comes out of the service with. Yeah. So that being said, almost every veteran comes out of the service with it, but I would, I would venture to say only about half realize they have it. Yeah. So how, how do you approach leadership development? Mm -hmm. what, what do you do in leadership development when these young men and women are students that sets them up for success post-education? No, I appreciate that. So one thing I didn't mention in my bio, um, I have the good fortune of uh, partnering with some other key veteran leaders in the student veteran realm. And we've had the, uh, we've, we've been collaborating with Student Veterans of America nationally and have established Student Veterans of America, Illinois, where we're working with all of the chapters uh, across the state of Illinois that are engaged with Student Veterans of America and, and more that are not actually, just continuing to, to do outreach. And I serve as the Executive Director for Leadership Development um, with the organization of SVA Illinois. And so, there's a couple of ways that, you know, that we approach this, but to address the underlying issue of what don't they see, a lot of that has to do with this negative um, uh, you know, narrative that had been permeating the, the media. And we see these pictures and, and veterans start to see themselves in that light on, uh, more so, or at least they perceive that that's the way the rest of the world perceives them. Right. When in fact, you talk about these, these basic competencies that they have, these underlying competencies, we think about what does every soldier or sailor or airman go through? They go through a process of learning how to be a team builder. Mm -hmm. um, they, they develop resiliency and grit. They become critical thinkers and adaptive learners. These are all qualities that uh, embody solid leadership. Mm -hmm. um, what they're missing, though, is a clear translation that moves these competencies that they have from, you know, they didn't know that they were having these things developed to how do we apply skills to them yeah. that then leverage those underlying competencies. And so one of the ways we do this is um, we have a, a, a leadership day um, coming up here February 25th down in Springfield. We're inviting student veterans who are interested in developing their leadership skills um, in such a way that they can engage with other student veteran leaders and other veterans who have moved into leadership positions, uh, whether they're in government or in entrepreneurship or in business, uh, non-for-profit engagement. And then here's the real key that we really take a lot of uh, pride in is that we're looking for people with potential and then bringing them in and giving them an opportunity to serve. And so we call this service as a strategy. And so there are lots of opportunities, especially while veterans are in that third and fourth year of their um, university experience, where they can get engaged with organizations like the Mission Continues or AmeriCorps or um, other service-oriented uh, organizations that then give them the opportunity to do some project management to do some um, planning and development and networking because that's extremely important. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. And it's an art. It's a science as well. And so how do we learn the science of networking? How to build a 30-second elevator pitch. How to um, follow up appropriately with a new contact that you've met. Um, and then on the art side of it, how do we just have a, an exchange of, of a conversational exchange that causes somebody else to become interested in me as um, as a person, as potential human capital for their business um, or for their organization. And so with Leadership Day is one way we do that. And then of course we have our Bridges to Employment series, um, which you've you know, participated in and, and coming off of that, we've had some great success where we've created other events that, can, that build on this idea of let's, let's put into the mind by showing examples of others that have come before them what these underlying core competencies look like. What what does team building from a military perspective look like now that I'm in business? What does um, critical thinking look like before when I was troubleshooting out in Afghanistan or Iraq? What does that look like coming out of my college experience and into the non-for-profit world or into government and politics? How do I apply these, these skills? Well, the best way that we can show that is by showing examples of 
you know, folks like yourself who made yeah. that transition and, and others like that. And, well, so and I, can't, series, I, I can't underscore enough to your point how important networking was for me in yeah. making that transition. So, And it's very hard. I mean, you know, there's oftentimes military personnel are really focused on the team. And they, they shy away from promoting themselves. Absolutely. But at some time, you still have to say, look, here's what I was able, here's what I learned, and here's what I can do. And then turn that into a question, you know, well, what do you do? And how does your business work? And then figuring out where that, get, where that nexus is at mm -hmm. and having a conversation about that. We, through our Bridges to Employment series, are giving veterans an opportunity to develop those skills. Now, some might say that, you know, how is that leadership development, mm -hmm. right? You know, I think of leadership development as putting people in charge of something. Well, it is, because you're putting them in charge of figuring out how to present themselves, and then when they, when they show something, now you're capturing that person and saying, hey, let's give you an opportunity to run this project. Come be a part of this organization. Let's put on some event at your campus. Um, let's, uh, let's get you involved with one of our corporate partners and create an opportunity for you to, to lead mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then see what happens from there. And we've had some really great success stories and some of them are now working at Sears. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I, we really appreciate your insights um, and just absolutely fantastic. Thanks for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having us. And having, we appreciate it. Thank you everyone for taking the time to watch. Mm -hmm.